Hi everybody, my name's Julie Esmond Elsh and I'm really sorry I can't be there with you today but I'm there in spirit in this celebration of multiculturalism and diversity in our condemnation of racism and racist violence all over the world. Seems to me that governments are getting very, very canny at making people at the bottom of the pile turn against each other instead of having our anger diverted to the top of the pile where it should be. So let's all stand together today, shoulder to shoulder, and stand up to racism. Really proud to support the UN anti-racism today. If a society is not a fair one, it's not a society worth living in. The Musicians Union, like lots of unions, have been the vanguard of equalities across the board, uh, and we've made big progress. Um, we dealt with colour bars in Birmingham in the 1960s, uh, in clubs there, so we've got a long history of fighting racism. Uh, but it seems to be taking a step backwards. There's a lot more stereotyping in the press and by politicians of minority ethnic groups, and we've got to get our message across. So it's great for the unions to come together with other groups, uh, and together we can actually defeat this. Every child needs to feel safe in school, and that's every child of whatever cultural group, of whatever colour, of whatever ethnicity, they need to feel safe in order to learn. And uh, what's true for children is true for people who work in schools, for teachers in particular, uh, that they need to feel able to express their religion, their culture, and, and feel proud of that within the multicultural environment, which is a school. And where that works, for example, in London, which now is the top performing area for state schools in the whole of the country, I believe one of the reasons why London is top performing is because of the rich cultural and ethnic mix both amongst pupils and teachers in London schools. Racism is a scourge both in the UK but globally and we want to make sure that teachers can be seen on the streets as role models for the young people with whom we work to say the racists shall not pass. We must be on the streets to defend our communities and say that racism is quite simply unacceptable. If you've been touched by the experience of homophobia and racism, that there are these identities that need to be t challenged and tackled, and that's why we're certainly supporting March the 22nd. With what's happening in Africa, the continent, and the countries like Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, um, Cameroon, we're obviously opposed to the human rights violations that are taking place there. So our aim is to ensure that we're supporting our LGBT brothers and sisters, taking a step back but listening to what they want us to do. The situation for Roma across Europe is, is, is absolutely disgraceful. The, um, the attacks that they suffer in Eastern Europe in particular we have absolutely no protection from the state and if they come to the UK looking for a better life where they don't have to put up with that, then they're attacked in the media, they're attacked by politicians and they're scapegoated and suffer discrimination um, in the streets and in trying to get housing and trying to get work. What's the accusation that people throw at the Roma in Sheffield? They say, well, they stand around. That, that, that is the accusation. We don't like them because they stand around because somehow the use of legs has become controversial in Sheffield. We've seen increasingly attacks on migrants, refugees, migrant workers, students, people that come to the UK for whatever reason are being uh, attacked by successive government policies, quite often being scapegoated, being uh, with divisive policies that are blaming migrants for um, well, problems that <laughs> happen in the economy, problems that are nothing to do with, with workers or with refugees. The government's whole approach to austerity has been to penalise those who are least able to defend themselves and to try and divide people up. We've seen it in their approach to welfare where they have cynically sought to turn those in work against those out of work and we see it now also with migration and seeking to blame migrants in this country for the problems of lack of services and resources. Uh, and our message as a union has to be, they seek to divide us, but it is uniting everyone is the best way to combat some of these dreadful policies that are scapegoating people. We're a worldwide family. Every trade unionist can stretch out their hand and hold the hand of another worker, irrespective of the colour of their skin, their religion, or any other difference. We are one family and we can unite and fight against racism and celebrate what we share. There's always this narrative, every generation, 
uh, we've got a problem on our hands. Who are these people coming here? What do they think? They don't look like us. They're, they're, they've got different values. They're Jews, they're, they're Catholics, they're Muslims, whatever it is. And in the end, it all sorts out. We always fit people in. They always integrate. Britain has been built by migrant workers over the years. And the future, uh, the politicians need to be honest and sincere about the migration needs of Britain. Britain and Europe cannot do without migrant workers. People have always come here. Well, the Celts weren't even the first people here. There were some people in here, here before the Celts even arrived. No one even knows who they were. All we know is that they were called Brian and Linda. We certainly need to bust the myths that migrants are coming over here and taking our jobs and we're full up. You know, we've got to remember, if you took every migrant out of the NHS today, it would collapse. You have a report that comes out, for, in for instance, that says that um, migrant entrepreneurs are bringing loads of new jobs into the country, creating small businesses all the time. That doesn't make the headlines. My parents came over to this country as migrant workers and I'm very, very proud that they did. And they've built up this economy and they continue to still deal, do so. So let's quash that. Let's make sure we're telling everyone to stand up to racism and telling everyone that we must oppose racism and fascist organisations within the UK and abroad. It's so important that people recognise that migrant workers have a tremendous contribution to make and that Europe was meant to be free movement of capital and at the same time free movement of uh, migrant workers or any worker at all. And it's a shame where the politicians, the way they're talking about curtailing the movement of workers within Europe. We've got immigration squads doing raids on workplaces and in our communities and we've got uh, landlords being used as immigration control, checking on migrants' ID when they apply for a house. It's hard enough to get a house as it is quite often in this country. And you've got border controls being foisted upon people who never signed up in their job to be border officers. There have been border controls in doctor surgeries, in schools, in universities. People didn't sign up as a social worker in order to be controlling immigration. Some people feel feel that they're being squeezed uh, because you know people will arrive in some numbers and, and, and be located in one area. My answer to that is we need social housing. We need to work with the unions throughout Europe to make sure that there's, a, that there's a proper wages throughout Europe. Everyone is paid a decent wage. Nobody is allowed to undercut anybody. Uh, and we need people in unions. Trade unions have had a proud tradition for over many, many decades of fighting racism in our society, whether it be from Cable Street to Blackburn to Burnley. It's been the trade unions that have been at the forefront of fighting the BNP, the English Defence League. The thing that we've got to remember more than everything is that racists don't always carry a BNP badge. Racists are not only members of the English Defence League. There are many other racists in our society. We've seen the growth of racism with the rise of UKIP. And we have got to show our opposition to what is happening. This day commemorates the Sharpeville massacre, uh, a racist, tyrannical regime. Everybody now admits that was wrong. Everybody says, oh yes, I was, uh, apartheid was terrible. Mandela was a great man. Well, they weren't all saying that 20, 30 years ago. They, you know, what people supported apartheid South Africa. The right wing in this country supported racism. The immigration bill that's going through Parliament just now has been described by one MP as the most racist piece of legislation that we've witnessed in this country since the 1960s. It's, we went on to say it was uh, intended to be a regime of harassment for migrants. Recently when the Home Office of course had those dreadful vans parading around central London then we campaigned and officially complained about that as a completely inappropriate use of Home Office resources. We need to tackle fear and insecurity and give people stability and hope because without hope people look for enemies and that's very dangerous in a society so for us it's really the fight against racism is the fight for a fairer more just society overall and that's why we're proud to be supporting not just the 22nd but this whole mobilization against a vicious obscene narrative of the right racism starts with a, a word or a phrase or an argument about immigration and then lead to the death camps that we've seen in the Second World War. So it's really important that the UN is, stand, is making this stand against racism, and the CW is proud to stand with others 
uh, on this uh, International Stand Up Against Racism Day. On behalf of more than 50 unions and 6 million working people, I'm proud to bring you a message of solidarity today. We all know why standing up against racism is so important. The problem here isn't uh, migrant workers, the problem here is rip-off bosses who are not paying people not just the minimum wage, not just a living wage, but the fair wage, the rate for the job that all workers deserve. And we need real action to support our public services too. No to cuts, yes to rebuilding our NHS, building decent council houses and giving young people jobs and apprenticeships and hope for the future. So it doesn't matter what passport a worker holds, we should all support each other, stand together, join a union and stand up against racism.